Hello viewers, I welcome you all to the session on the poem Freedom. This poem is written by Jayanta Mahapatra, a very popular poet of IP, Indian uh, poetry in English. In the present poem, Jayanta Mahapatra in a reflective mood highlights the stark realities existing in spite of the country proclaiming its independent status. When I mean here, country definitely I am sure you all understand it's India. He throws light on the disparity and shows the paradoxical state of existence. Paradoxical, the contradictory state of existence which is there with regard to freedom of India, Indian freedom. Now before I go deeper to discuss about the various aspects of this present poem, let me read the text to you all. At times as I watch, it seems as though my country's body floats down somewhere on the river. Left alone, I grow into a half disembodied bamboo, its lower part sunk into itself on the bank. Here old widows and dying men cherish their freedom, bowing time after time in obstinate prayers. While children scream with this desire for freedom to transform the world without even laying hands on it. In my blindness, at times I fear I would wander back to either of them. In order for me not to lose face, it is necessary for me to be alone. Not to meet the women and a child in that remote village in the hills, who never had even a little rice for their one daily meal these 50 years. And not to see the uncaught, bloodied light of sunsets cling to the tall white columns of Parliament House. In the new temple man has built nearby, the priest is the one who knows freedom while God hides in the dark like an alien. And each day I keep looking for the light, shadows find excuses to keep. Trying to find the only freedom I know, the freedom of the body when it's alone. The freedom of the silent shale, the moonless coal, the beds of streams of the sleeping God. I keep the ashes away, try not to wear them on my forehead. Here ends the poem, a very very popular one by Jayanta Mahapatra. To know more about the poet, Jayanta Mahapatra was born in Katak on the 22nd of October 1928. He belongs to a poor lower middle class family. He had his early education in Katak. Mahapatra, after acquiring a first class in master's degree in the subject physics, joined as a teacher. He served in different government colleges of Orissa and all his working life he taught physics at different stages in Orissa and attained superannuation that is retirement from the post in the year 1986. Being a teacher of physics he has taken up poetry in his later years. He started writing poetry at the age of 38 quite late by normal standards. He published his first collection of poems Swayamvara and other poems, it was in his early 40s, that is in the year 1971 and that was followed by the publication of Close the Sky 10 by 10. On the whole, as per the information available till date, Mahapatra has authored 18 books of poems. One of Mahapatra's better remembered works like every writer, every poet is remembered for some works which make him a kind of stalwart in his own field. So Mahapatra's better remembered work is the long poem relationship for which he won the Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1981. Besides being one of the most popular Indian poets of his generation, Mahapatra was also part of the trio. Trio here? three poets who laid the foundations of modern Indian English poetry. He shared a special bond with A.K. Ramanujan, one of the finest poets in the IEP tradition, Indian English poetry tradition. Mahapatra over time has managed to carve a quiet, tranquil poetic voice of his own distinctly different from those of his contemporary. That means he created a unique identity for himself as a poet. His lyricism combined with authentic Indian themes puts him in a league of his own. 
about this particular thing how he is having that authenticity in the portrayal on Indian themes we will get to learn more in the next module that is his poetic genius and dominant themes. As said poetry is nothing but emotions recollected in tranquility. No poet can completely cut himself off from his works. To further substantiate the same, let us have a look at a quotation given by the poet himself and I am quoting, my poems deal with the life within myself where the mind tries to find a sort of coherence from the mass of things in the world outside it. This was quoted in Sunday Observer on the 27th of May 1984. Jayanta Mahapatra began writing poems rather late as we discussed previously in comparison to his contemporaries but this late beginning did not in any way distort his achievement. His poems have appeared in most of the reputed journals all over the world, he received the prestigious not just Indian awards but he received even international awards. And one among them is prestigious Jacob Gladstein Memorial Award in the year 1975. Coming to the themes in his poetry, it can be noticed in his early poems, the strands of love and preoccupation with self, a kind of trying to know quest for identity, self-understanding, introspection, reflection about oneself, it's always not so positive. It's not all the rosy life that is depicted by the poet Chayanta Mahapatra. His poetic canvas is peopled, that means spread, or it is full by the street cobbler, hungry street children, a woman in pain. All that goes to make the intricacies of the everyday life of real people, I mean, it means realism, that's not something you know out of the world feeling. He was down to the earth portraying, depicting in his works only whatever he saw, true to his feeling. It is through the local, taking trivial, commonplace, ordinary things, he tried to reach for the universal, something which we get to see even in the poems of Robert Frost. Mahapatra anchors his poetry in the sights, sounds and experiences of ordinary life and the ordinary man. We may miss observing this in the daily run of the mill kind of existence as said by Helen Keller. We happen to miss like because she was blind, she was able to understand, we really miss certain common things which may be quite important and vital. The same way Mahapatra in his poetry tries to project something which is missed out by us but then definitely has a kind of you know weightage or something which has some voice. So that has got echoing force in the poetry of Jayanta Mahapatra. The visionary world constructed in his poetry is full of metaphors and symbols. The richness and sophistication of language, the softness and delicacy of the words chosen, the sweetness of music emerging from a fountain-like flow of the verse form and all these contribute to the greatness and ingenuity of Mahapatra's poetry. He is absolutely free from imitation, borrowing, etc. See, this is the reason he is said to be an authentic poet, not trying to imitate the style of others. Mahapatra is the poet of town and village, making his choice very clear. The solace of the forest and the tang of the seashore prefer to the mechanical and automated noises of the big cities. If we take a bird's eye view of the titles of his volumes of poetry, most of them imply tragic vision of life to which the poet is predominantly and essentially committed. Something which we miss out but because he had a keen observant eye, he is not letting anything which pinches go unnoticed. They connote loneliness, silence, frustration and repentance. Close the sky, 10 by 10, waiting, the false start, shadow space, bare face, etc. are the perfect examples. Look at the titles itself of the collections of his poems. In short, Jayanta Mahapatra finally emerges as a poet of human conditions. 
The authenticity is what brought laurels to his poetic acumen and he became popular throughout the world and was able to establish his own place in the poetic tradition of India. Now, because we have already discussed there was authenticity in the portrayal of Jayanta Mahapatra. And when we talk about authenticity, it is nothing but a kind of emotional connect. So, let us see the kind of emotional connect Jayanta Mahapatra had with the land of origin that is India and more specifically Orissa. In this regard, it is worthwhile to quote again the words of the poet himself. Mahapatra in his award receiving speech at the Sahit Academy New Delhi declared to Orissa to this land in which my roots lie and lies my past and in which lies my beginning and my end. A strong bond with his land of origin is reiterated. His attitude to Orissa the place to which he belongs is however a matter of deep concern. The reason he was feeling all the time pain looking at the kind of atrocities on the women folk, the kind of you know existence the other masses had and all. So it is rightly pointed out by a critic on the poetry of Janta Mahapatra and even the titles of his poems demonstrate the unmistakable hallmark of Orissa. To have a look at few, Dawn at Puri, Bhuvaneshwar, Orissa, Main Temple Street, Puri, Konarka, Reigns on Orissa, in an Orissa village, living in Orissa, deaths in Orissa, so on and so forth. So, a characteristic trait of his poetry is the depiction of India and Hindu religion and its various rituals and myths. Here it is interesting to note, even though Jayanta Mahapatra's grandfather accepted, adopted to Christianity out of compelling forces because of adversities of famine and poverty, still he was having a kind of clamoring for the Hindu religion. That is the reason is so truthful in the depiction as well. But at the same time, there was a kind of ambiguity, a sense of insecurity and always a quest to know what exactly he is. There is always a sense of insecurity and alienation in the poetry of Jayanta Mahapatra because of this reason as well. He perpetuates his quest for identity and is keen on the assertion of his self which is emanating. Emanating means in a way coming out from a veritable part of his holy land and its rich socio-religious traditions. In critical uh, evaluations, he is usually described as a significant poet of Uriyan sensibility. The poetry of Jayanta Mahapatra describes and evokes what is closest to him. His commitment to an identification Orissa becomes complete when he exhorts the dark daughters engraved on the structure of the sun temple at Konark. The magnificent temples, the sea washed beaches, the crowded streets of his native state Orissa are all presented by the poet in his poetry. Jayanta Mahapatra's poetry celebrates the essence of an Indian sensibility. A sensibility which is fostered by the rain and the sun who seem to do nothing new to the earth. Jayanta Mahapatra's poetry uh, you know, presents to us his penetrating eye which did not leave any aspect of Urissa's culture unvisited. Coming to the present poem that is freedom. Look, the word freedom itself brings to our mind something like, you know, a kind of independence, free from fetters, free from bondage, free from chains which in a way bond you to something. But in the poem, Jayanta Mahapatra is talking something contrast. That is, he is not happy with the present system in the sense the, you know, way how India has attained freedom, but still people are suffering. That's what in a way is presented in this poem, Freedom. In this poem, Jayanta Mahapatra highlights the social injustice existing in the country. That is, social injustice is trying to reflect in the poem. The concept of freedom is not simply being not under control. According to him, we are not free 
only when we are free from others we should be free in a fuller way that is fairness to everybody in the country freedom encompasses the elements of fairness equality among the people irrespective of caste creed and gender is the cornerstone of freedom for nation a few handfuls having the power trying to exploit is not real freedom the disparity in the economic status is one of the foremost reasons for all the problems in the country mahapatra resonates in his poem with regard to poverty deprivation social injustice the plight of the indian women all these things are projected and presented in a way where is questioning are we free his conscience is not letting him accept like india is independent looking at the kind of existing situation around him in the country in the state as the miserable plight around him constantly pains him and his self is awakes to the dull reality around ignoring the deprived lot he cannot write about better things so the societal reality is a clarion call a call to his poetic genius and he feels god has given me voice and i am trying to spread it among my people so that there could be some justice at least towards the end or in the near future uh jayant mahapatra is not swayed by emotional notions of freedom and independence of india that means he is not trying to simply celebrate on par with others fine we are a free country he is rather pain looking at the suffering of the people who are there because of poverty and other reasons the women are not really able to enjoy the freedom so he is pain at that and that's what he is trying to depict in the present poem freedom independence lost its sheen and sense as freedom from hunger is the mark of real independence for a country the poem though title freedom depicts the bleak picture of the society something which is stark rather than singing praise of independence india has acquired the poet questions the real essence of being independent according to him independence is not just a status it's not just a status which can be possessed and felt proud but he says something more meaningful should be there the way how people lead a satisfied life that's what makes a country really independent so when the people are not satisfied how can i celebrate the status of being independent that's what is implied by the poet jayant mahapatra in this poem The poem begins in a reflexive note where the poet laments the situation prevailing in the country. He personifies India and says that the body of his country is floating down somewhere on the river. We have lost what is he trying to convey here imply we are lost as a country. Mahapatra is shattered at the deteriorating i mean degrading declining morals and conduct of the people of india which are against the gandhian principles so he says the principles on which we or the indians were fighting for freedom like gandhi tagore and other such they are not there at all now people are just greedy they have insatiable urge as such to amass and just think only for themselves and that is not is uh, what is freedom according to him in an interview with sudeep ghosh mahapatra shares to quote i belong to a lost generation i can't look into the future you see we were brought up on gandhi and tagore today any trivial act ends up in violence there is no more tolerance in people or in organization gandhism is a word a metaphor for people we appear to have lost our ideal that means the ideals of fairness justice equality tolerance brotherhood harmony all these do not stand anywhere even though we declare ourselves as an independent country and that is what is lamented by the poet in this poem freedom the portrayal of women is another aspect which creates a kind of unique identity to the poet so although there is an improvement in the cultural aspects orissa is still in the entrapment that means in the trap of staunch patriarchy 
he says though we call ourselves independent not just looking at only from the state of common people even the women are deprived of their right they have the freedom but then that is only in the limited uh, scope as such that means they are not given the fuller freedom fuller scope as such to grow the socio psychological construction of the male never permits that means the mindset the existing societal circumstances never let a woman to be a kind of free human being you know it's it is very tough to create an identity as counterpart of the man and in such a context a real meaningful life for women is far from reach though we still talk about equality gender these that see beginning with a kind of depiction where people are not having equality he moves on to tell like fine even the women are not given equal status in the society another thing which has to be paid attention which should be given attention writers like jayanta mahapatra are putting their hard effort to give women the identity that they deserve whatever share that they deserve he is expecting to echo the same thing in his poetry he is saying women have become the victims of carnal pleasure of the men folk mahapatra not only talked about these ostracized that means segregated cornered women but in generally he describes the conditions of women who are exiled at home he uses his poet's voice to give their thought a narration they are the sufferers in a relationship before the marriage is the father the brothers and after the marriage the husband that's the way how he depicts the life of a woman the role of a wife is reduced to mere ironic existence and that is something which is very very painful to jayant mahapatra so i'm sure that's kind of very enlightening experience for all of you to have heard something more about not just the poet about his works but the way how he was very very sensitive towards societal reality he was trying to understand the real concept of freedom independence for a country for a state emancipation of human beings is what he was thinking about or rather implying in the work apart from that the way how women are subjected to atrocities is something which is very very painful to him so when we just go for reading the works of jayanta mahapatra a picture flashes in front of the mind sai about the existing dadan existing circumstances of uh, orissa and otherwise the way how he perceived them as a poet